Hello, greetings and salutations. Welcome to YARP episode 84. And today we continue the Jim Bob the Lifter arc with It's I Love You, Philip Morrison. I think it's just Morris. Morris. It's Philip Morris. Ah, oh, fuck Dude, God, 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 why? God damn time. Wyatt, you <laughs> literally <laughs> had <laughs> one job. <laughs> you had one job. Every single oh time. Oh my God. I'm like the, I'm like the anti Phil. I'm like the anti Your word Morris, is not so. your bomb, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cleveland now, would be so ashamed of you. I was gonna say, but how easy is it faking your death via AIDS? Cleavon shakes his fucking head at you. I mean, I am. He's, He's disappointed. Like... <laughs> Alright, so today we're being joined oh, by special, we're being joined by a special guest, uh, the star of the movie, uh, Cleavon. Uh, Cleavon, out of curiosity, when the gay guys came to you with your notes, uh, why did you go with DHL? <laughs> Has DHL been around since 1997? God, let's hope so. Right. Also, just sounds a bit funnier than FedEx. No, it's not. The tracking number, <laughs> motherfucker. It's like one of my favorite. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that guy stole the show for a good like 20 minutes. Yeah. No. So, um, we watched the movie. It was definitely a film. Uh, it had Jim Carrey in it. It had a. Uh, it had a uh, Obi Wan Kenobi in it. And yeah, uh, what let's be the... real. It, it was kind of a faggot film. Uh, let's just can't say it that. was so gay. What are you a like, fag? I, ah, fucking seen... hell, we're trying to get money. Fucking... Well, this was I never. Hold on, like we literally about. started this oh, no. episode with an AIDS joke. We were this was never going to get monetized. Like, yeah, we the game was rigged from the money. start. No one Whatever. pays us. Fair enough. So yeah. um... What is a term for gay blackface or gay <laughs> exploitation? Because, like, I feel like if I was gay, I'd be really offended by this fucking movie. Oh, Why? yeah. Because, <laughs> like, well, it is the two gay stars are incredibly endearing characters who are very fun to watch. See, that's when you start making chocolate and cream jokes. Yeah, but it's just, it's mm. this weird, it's this weird thing. It's like, when did this movie come out? 2009? Something like that, yeah. Like, it feels like because it feels like a really stupid parody of a gay relationship but it's also really heartwarming but i think that's more of the job of uh uh jim and uh fuck what is his name you and Ewan? 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 Ewan. Ewan. yeah that's fine. Like the thing is, that, is it a parody of like a gay romance or is it a con artist movie similar to catch me if you can or wolf of wall street that just happens to center on a gay romance as opposed to just the regular womanizing we usually get. Hmm. See, the weird like, thing which is, is it? You me. might be onto something there because I feel like we don't really know that much about either one of these characters. Like, I get we're not supposed to know anything about Steve because he's, you know, he doesn't know who he is and all that oh, crap. Man. But we really don't know that much about Philip either. Like, as yeah, a character, we yeah, we don't know like what he did. Like, well, he says what he did, but like we don't know anything about him. The whole movie is like supposed to be about him, like or the love of him, but it's like. We don't know much more than he likes we water. We know a and couple fat. of the main attributes that makes uh, Stephen really latch on to him. It's like he's like the first thing was obviously just that guy's hot. I'm gonna chat him up. Yeah, you know, very simple. And then it's like getting to know them. It's like wow, this guy's like just so fucking innocent. Like just so right, yeah. genuine, so ready to see the good in situations, even if those situations are ones <laughs> where he was actually taken advantage of. Like. Mm -hmm. That's fucked up, but he's just so relentlessly sweet that it just wears Steven down, and yeah, he gets really fucking attached. Yeah, for moment one, he was like, yes, I want that. Um, well, I mean, that's kind of like a con man's dream, right? I mean, somebody that's like the perfect mark, essentially. Yeah, but you would think they'd be taking advantage of him, but in, in honesty, what, everything that Steve did was for him, so... Well, see, I think oh, that's no, how but it you could still make the argument he was taking advantage of him. Or he started that way, and then over time he fell in love with his own con. Hmm. To the point where he, he so, threw I everything else aside for the sake of keeping that I one just going. I don't see the appeal of, like, his, like, as a con man, I don't see, like, what his initial thing would be to Phil. Like, you know what I mean? I thought he just wanted to talk to him. Like, I didn't get any, like, I, I didn't get any, like, thing that he was trying to fuck with him in any, like, messed up way. Yeah, well, agreed. Well, that's the thing. Everything he does is a con, but in his own fucked up way, he's doing it for the same genuine reasons. 
Like, he would lie and steal, and he would get all this money. And he's doing it behind Philip's back, but in his own way, because he's fucking broken inside. He's a compulsive liar, a compulsive con man. He's still in his own way doing it for Philip, because under all of that, there is something genuine. That's kind of the uh, the culminating point. Mm-hmm. And we just get brought along for the absolute wild fucking ride that is Stephen's life. Yeah. It's a now, but not a backstory builder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Although we do get a little bit of backstory. Seeing dicks in the clouds. Dicks in the clouds. Uh, he was Doodling dicks. You know, just dicks everywhere. He's, he's adopted. Oh, dude, when fucking Larry found the dick on the financial records. And that was like... <laughs> <laughs> Mm. No, was like uh, his calling card, like a fucking master villain. No, I love how uh, well he was the Riddler. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, he's the gay Riddler. Listen, you can hold these opinions and and have these things if you want, or you can suck his dick. It's your choice. <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> yeah, but That's... like I said, it's just, it feels like this weird thing where it's like. I don't know. I, I'm I'm ha- I'm struggling to read it, but like or to reach the words I'm trying to think of. But there's there's something like it just feels like offensive. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it <laughs> Is it because they use like, the word faggot a lot? No, not even that. It's just like the way. <laughs> I feel like, like that's just realistic for the time <laughs> the movie's set in. Like, I don't that's... know. Like there's like there's like shots where it's like uh, like there's that one gay guy. He's like towards the end of the movie, and he's just in his office with like no pants, and it's like. <laughs> That that was the cop from the beginning when he said "cut yeah, my he's, ass." Yeah, he's coming his ass, but it's like that. Like people don't. But really why did we it. cut to him? Like what? What? Yeah. What did he have to do with the rest of the story? It no, felt like, really. Think he's no, he was, he was one of doing, his breakouts. He was, yeah, he was facilitating one of his breakouts, but we had to get the wide shot of him not wearing pants because hey, he's gay. You know what I mean? It's like these little like subtle things. It's like wait, what the fuck are you trying to say? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Also, people have tiny dogs. How and why? Yeah, I think it's, it's we cut to the shot of him pantsless as a sort of like a very short visual thing of like you could kind of fill in the blanks of how and why this particular con was set up. Well, if rather you think than about it, that's the whole them. jail mentality of payment. Yeah, he's still getting there. He's still getting enough to where it's literally like I'm gonna go jerk off because I'm doing you this favor, but you're giving me inf- you're giving me stuff to do it. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know. Like I said, it's, motherfucking it's, bond. It's it's just it's just it's this weird feeling I get. Like I said, I did I don't know. Like I might be like looking for too much. Honestly, yeah. Are, I, what would you call like, this thing that you're talking about? Is well, like, like I said, it's, it's it, this... like I said, like we talked about black exploitation before. It's like oh, these are like parodies of like black people. This almost feels like they're parodies of gay people in certain. So extent. this is exploitation. Yeah, there you go. Fuck, you came up with a way better word than I did. <laughs> Um, but exploitation, exploitation, but yeah, like I said, yeah, I that shit. I don't, here's the thing, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing though, because like it's still a pretty, like, great, it's pretty, it's a well made movie. Um, like the the cinematography and all that stuff is really well done. Uh, the fucking acting for pretty much everyone is like just like their best fucking work you know what i mean it's it's Ow. it's weird like it's weird how like good it is for like this weird like non-comedy because well, like yeah. i guess because like i didn't really laugh at anything besides those two things I, yeah I la- thing but, the, but the, honestly the like the bond. fact that that james and ewan mcgregor like these you know top a rated actors got overshadowed by fucking cleavon i don't know man can you really say they brought their a game they really can't <laughs> but Just um the notes at them I'm just swinging that so I'm a fucking D. Bro, <laughs> you got a fucking <laughs> tracking number? <laughs> a word in my motherfucking bond. <laughs> gay, gay ass up. <laughs> um, I, mean, I, I I'm with I'm like with that, Max bro. on I'm with Max on this one. Outside of like the like two or three of the jokes, I didn't. I didn't well, say this that's the thing. It's like, funny. is it supposed to be like a dark comedy it's or labeled, is it really nice? It's I, labeled as a. Uh, black comedy. So yeah, like, I thought it's it was supposed to be funny comedy. to an extent. You know what I mean? It feels more like a drama to me with a little bit of. Comedy. 
Yeah, Sprinkle yeah, that in. has funny moments. Yeah, because like, uh, what, what what is a black comedy? Like, you know what I mean? Is it supposed to be a funny or is it supposed to be like dark? Like, and yeah, black well, movies? Zombieland is an example of a of a dark comedy. Yeah, because we that's see right. people get ripped to fucking shreds, <laughs> but yeah, they're like, it's, hey, it's the step idea one, that like, all the humor is dark and and twisted, and you know, a lot of like sarcasm and dry wit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just man, yeah. Okay, we we have to talk about the scene real quick because yeah, that scene is amazing. So there's a nice little mon- nice little gay montage of Phil and uh, Steve becoming, you know, gay. And uh, it's this beautiful moment where they're listening to a song and they're uh, in a jail cell together, holding each other, slowly dancing. <laughs> and it's just juxtaposed by lights out, motherfucker. And it goes on for like three and minutes. He gets into an act- <laughs> and he gets into a fight. <laughs> Well, he gets into a fight with like boss. seven guards. Like, like, there's like a like half the fucking prison like w- runs into the cell. Like, but like they're just still dancing. And like, like I said, it, it's so well done. And like the guy who played Cleon just does it so well. Because well, yeah, was- he said you got to play the whole thing. My <laughs> my motherfucking bond, bitch. We're gonna come in. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fuck you, pig, come on. My dick makes you get sucked. Okay, but when you're that big, you got some balls to swing back. I know, that's what I'm saying, but, like, fucking hell. Like, I'm so, so, like, you know, shout out to Cleveland for, like, literally taking one for the team. Like, what a badass. Also, uh, a, on, a, on a side note. As an uh, ally. Mac, <laughs> I was going to say, Mac, um, on a side note, hey, Max, what's your icon? <laughs> what's my icon? Is that Herman oh. Cain? It's why are you gay? Yeah, it's the, the Ugandan why are you gay? Oh, I posted them and changed it to that after like the he's like, by the way, I'm gay. And that's all like, <laughs> what are you gay? Why are you who is, gay? Who is gay? Speaking of that juxtaposition, by the way, there's another scene like that where in prison they're showing the romantic film and everyone's there just kind of watching, kind of bored. They're all like cuddled up. It's like a really and then there's just somebody thing like a and then it keeps on oh, panning over. And there's just this fat guy uncomfortably close to the camera and he is fucking going to town. He's well, yeah, trying to like... defeat his meat. <laughs> he, he is domestically <laughs> abusing his meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I was like, when he was in the hospital, he's like, I got to right tell Deb like oh real delicately. Oh man. Max right now is just what do oh, I do? Dude. What do I uh <laughs> what do I do? Oh my god, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> my, my kid. He's trying to defeat his me. <laughs> god, it's you, made, you, made, <laughs> you made me cool <laughs> but can you but oh, can you when you stand a slur joke and not and laugh? The, the <laughs> Latin boss music kicks in. Oh, <laughs> Defeat is mean. These balls speak in Latin, man. What the fuck? Uh, why? I'm gonna need a minute after this. Just I need to go get a drink after that shit. Uh, it literally oh is God. the like, uh, like you may be cool, but can you survive a slur joke and not laugh? What would it that you just fucking? <laughs> So other than those really phenomenal jokes, I felt like the rest of the movie was fairly boring and repetitive. Like it, yes. it amazes me how many times he was able to do the exact same thing. I was actually really worried that he really was dying of AIDS. And I was about to be like, I don't want him to watch a movie where Jim Carrey just dies well, of AIDS. I think to, to help push that, that's why they started the movie with him like on the deathbed. You know, they yeah. wanted you to really buy that. And, like, don't even f- feel bad because the first time I watched this, literally, I did laugh in the first half where it was, honestly, you had those good jokes. And then I turn around and I'm just this crying bitch of a mess because here he is and I believe he's actually dying. But you know he's a liar and in the midst of that, you <laughs> actually momentarily forget that he's an yeah, asshole. You fuck- yeah, the, it's a very like a very good trick on the audience to, to just fucking he tricks you again 
Well, what it does is put you in the exact same headspace as uh, Obi Wan when he walks into the room, and upon <laughs> seeing like his dead lover, his first instinct, zero hesitation response is, "You fucker!" He takes it to him. How dare you disrespect Black Mask like that? <sighs> I can't believe you just reminded me that even was Black Mask in that movie. <laughs> yep, he was. <sighs> Man. Is that why? Is that why he did the Obi Wan show? <laughs> Birds of Prey was the final like, like oh nope, I can't do anything else. <laughs> anyway, to the thing of um the middle part of the movie, the kind of just story of Stephen going through his life. There's a bit of repetition there, but I think it does actually kind of establish a point, and it's one of the reasons I actually quite like him as a character, or I like watching him as a character, is because. It just establishes the pattern. In any circumstance, given any opportunity, he will yeah. always do things to extremes. Like, he can't help himself. Even when he's got everything figured out and everything's good, he will fuck it up by doing shit to extremes, even when he doesn't need to. Well, panic does make you a dumb animal. Mm. Well, the, I, I imagine, the, uh, you know, being a... Uh a con man you know like you're always kind of living on the edge of like your con could fall apart at any minute like when that, his boss walked in and was like hey like he thought it was all done right then and there and then it's like hey do you play golf and then but then uh when he's finally driving away it's like are you coming back to the office i'm not coming back and i think you know why yeah, because he's been through this before. He's had cons fall apart. And that's kind of the thing. The longer the pattern goes on, the worse he gets. Because the more experience he gets just being cool under the pressure of his entire shit falling apart. Because mm -hmm. eventually it's just like, okay, this one didn't fail. Well, I'm going to try again. And then it culminates in his montage of prison breaks. Mm -hmm. Each more Wait. weird than the last. I think Wait. the oddest one has to be when he's dressed as an actual hooker, and the guards are just looking like fucking vice man. And then they just what go right back to the conversation. Shoes, man. Why do they keep it? always the shoes? Just a running gag. But yeah, like you want to keep your shoes, you don't want to go in barefoot, I guess. But, I'm uh, literally trying to think of a Jim Carrey reference where it actually said something about shoes. And I, just... I think it might just be an anecdotal thing of the guys. Like, just it's just one of the things they don't tell you about getting arrested. Is like, whatever way they drag you, you always lose your fucking shoes, man. And it's just like one of those weird little details the writing team just latched onto. Fair enough. And At yeah, least that's what it comes across as. I don't actually know. And this and this is based on the like true story. Like, there is a guy. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, scroll into the the yep chat, I actually posted a picture of the two of them. Yeah. Steve which Harris one's which, uh, by the yeah. way? Which one? Uh, the, one is... the bald one is uh, Stephen Harris. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, the idea... Yeah, you can see they kind of zhushed up uh, Philip Morris there. He he does not look as, as pretty as, as uh, Black well, Man. Well, neither of them are Hollywood movie stars, we'll say that. Yeah, but no, let's, let's be right. By that here. token either, they're not like fucking mm -hmm. trolls either. You, know? you can see it. I don't know, that I, smile the, 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 the bottom one looks kind of like, like a... The kind of guy that's like, are, are you a pedo? Like, man, oh. I, you can't be around kids unsupervised. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I think that's cute. For a sec, I, no, honestly, uh, for a second, my first thought when that picture popped up was, are we looking at a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer? I was gonna say, uh, uh, yeah. I think it's those like <laughs> late seventies, eighties, thick rim glasses. They don't look good yeah. on anyone anymore. He's no. ruined those. No, I mean they look good on if you run like a radar dish or whatever, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I don't like. Uh... Yeah, like, there, there was some like really great shots, like the one in particular when like uh, Phil fakes um, Steve is dead. They do this really beautiful thing of like having like the audio completely drown out, and like all you hear is uh, Phil crying, and then when the guard pops up, like the the ambient um, audio pops back in. Like, you hear, like, the hustle and bustle of, like, the prison. Like, there are a lot of really good shots, stuff like that, of that. And, like, the part where he's, like, smacking up the goons to the window trying to get Steve's attention. But, like, you see that, like, there's no point. Yeah, in that yeah, that he out. can't like hear said, it. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot, there's weirdly a lot to praise about the movie. Uh, like, like I, just, I don't know how I feel about the story itself. 
But is that a problem? With the, I guess it would be a problem with the movie, even though it is based off of like a real thing, right? I mean, yeah, it's still being told in a certain way by a creative team. Mm -hmm. Realistically, when I was discussing this before, I did bring it up that it is very. It's 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 more of a it's more of a drama with sides of comedy, but it feels like there are parts of his career in the movie where you've got mixes of liar liar. You do have references to some like the ant comment, Bruce Almighty. It's from Bruce Almighty. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And realistically, what you find in witty satires for the way the gay community is actually socially visualized and stereotyped you have movies like i now pronounce you chuck and larry or you even have show or, or you even have gay icons like tom holland these are all like the big hollywood what? features wait tom's not gay uh he dresses in drag once and i like he dresses in drag he's... once for like the fucking like like that well, no, I'm not, I'm not right. saying like that. Literally like, like, banging Zendaya. Like, I was gonna say like, is that is, is he that a the big right? thing in the gay not community? Him. Like, you... Not him. Not this actor. It was another guy who was actually the dude who created. It's I may be wrong on the last name, but his first name is Tom. But he's the guy who created the very masculine, iconicized poses of like power masculinity oh. within the within photograph it's literally that gay biker and gay bdsm kneeling kind of feel to it the very mat pro masculine like in and of itself the entire gay community is even with gen z now is completely living in that social stereotype and realistically i feel like they went with the hollywood icon of what a gay community was supposed to be or yeah. what everybody yeah. misconstrues it and really sees as the super just What's the word I'm looking for? Flamboyant. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, when when you're making something your entire identity, but you don't actually really know what any of it means, exactly, it, it just becomes the stereotype. You just start to embrace the things that other people have done. So. It makes it more relatable for the actual gay community who watch it, who don't know what the fuck they're actually. Mm -hmm. It's why that movie did get popular well, in the way it did. Maybe that's why you got those. Uh, what did we? What did we land on? Uh, exploitation vibes, Max. Like maybe that's Gaze what. <laughs> yeah, because like, I was trying to. I I agree with you, Max. I was um, like I see how it's a well done movie, and I enjoyed it for that, uh, along with I'm the acting. But the um. For some reason, the gay parts, like some of the gay parts, were making me uncomfortable. I was trying to figure out why that was, well, because yeah. I, like that doesn't usually language. bother me. Yeah, but it feels, like, it feels like it's written by a straight man who's not actually gay, but he's trying to portray like gay relationships. You're right. Yeah. Right. Like I Tom said, Hughes. I was wrong on the name. My uh, bad. I thought you meant Andrew Tate. My bad. Um, <laughs> but like, no one means <laughs> Andrew Tate. He just is. <laughs> <laughs> no, the gay icon, Andrew Tate. Like, yeah, everybody knows that. He's so stunning and brave. Yeah, ever since his time on Big Brother. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> or wait, was that the Truman Show? Uh, The Tate Show. That's the second Let's Andrew not put Tate those two in the same in. sense. <laughs> I think, in all honesty, I, uh, I why, if anyone were to ever at glitched out i can't do anything uh if anyone were to ever ask like oh do you want to watch philip morris again i'd be like i'm i'm good it's unless you want to watch the, not, the unless gay, we want to watch the, the 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 black guy you scenes again i'm willing to it's okay you just want to watch the clip just want to watch the yeah i just want to watch cleavon like if i'm where does my motherfucking bone <laughs> <laughs> so what you well, want is the sequel I, mean. I love you cleavon <laughs> and, and it's exactly. it's, it's weird because like there's nothing really wrong with the movie like i yeah. mean objectively i can't point out a bunch of flaws or issues but it's i i guess to me it just felt like the story wasn't really satisfying you know like it didn't really feel like it came to any kind of conclusive ending it just kind of we basically left off in the middle because it's still ongoing, it's still you know is what it is. And I'm pretty I mean, sure the story kind of ends when he goes to prison for nothing. 
Yeah, and I kind of like the final shot of him running away. <laughs> but, and I mean, the... I, just, I don't know. I... That gave me some real Forrest Gump vibes. Right. <laughs> I do love that he has his own fucking I'm back on my bullshit theme song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? What's it called? Like, it was what? Silly, uh, silly Crying Boy? Yeah, Silly Crying or something. You mean Silly Crying or something like that, yeah. Yeah. Whatever, it is cool as Cleavon. <laughs> I mean, I'll even take props to that song that Cleavon played. Yeah. At least that song had some balls because Cleavon stood up for it. It, I wonder if you can download a version of that song that actually has him getting the shit beat out of him in the background. I'll, 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 don't worry, I'll edit that together. So romantic. The yeah, Philip so, Morris I love, version no, of uh, it. I was gonna I say the, the, the uh, idea it, that the, you're like assuming that he got his ass beat. <laughs> POV because, ambience. Because you're it, like, I'm on in. On. He was still, he was still like fucking like. <laughs> I was, shit. I was gonna say it's like ASMR like ambiance thing, a Cleavon getting his ass beat. <laughs> but where does my motherfucking bond? <laughs> ASMR POV fucking Cleavon gave you his word. Well, it just made me realize that this whole movie was actually kind of set up in a way for for the Cleavon artistic movie. Artistic interpretation I know. or societal interpretation, like personal. You actually. When you are introduced to a character like Cleavon, none of the characters have backstory, but you can trust and know with the way Cleavon's attitude is, this motherfucker actually is a loyal person at heart, regardless of the kind of shit he takes. And you do have characteristics with um, Jim Carrey's character where he's just like, you know this kid has suffered his whole life with his own fucking psychosis of the con man that's his whole personality. That's what you've come to expect. So you know, regardless of how much he's going to pull your heartstrings, this man is a fucking goddamn deviant. No, he, it's because he's adopted. He's a filthy orphan, right? <laughs> See, that's the real problem. Is, does the gay thing and the stealing, does that go? <laughs> <laughs> And you know what's weird? You know, like, like, she, like, just be like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's another, that's another <laughs> example, though, because she's kind of not wrong. Like, that's the weird thing about the way the movie sets that up. It's like, oh, it's a joke. Ha ha. She's being intolerant and gay. So it's like, wait, no. He actually is stealing all this shit so he can be gay. Because being oh, gay, I mean, that's, is, gay, well, being gay is really know. expensive. You okay, know? Hey, that's what I'm saying. Like, I his excuse. Personal I know that's his excuse. I'm saying, like, that's what the word. movie is, like, implying with, like, the way it's, like, showing it. It's like, no, yeah. he was a con man before. Now he's just living a different con, and he's living a different con with no inhibitions because of his near death bullshit. Well, I don't think he was. A all con of it man. is put on him. I don't think he was a con man before that. He was just being a cop to get the records and all that. Well, no, he was like living con. a lot. That's that's kind of the thing. That's why that's his yeah, whole living life. a lot. Living a lot isn't a con in itself. Well, I I, I think he would agree with you. I oh think no, that's he, where, he absolutely uh, conned. Uh, what was her name? Deb. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I I would say a gay man, you know, going through the motions and living the straight lifestyle is a con. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be malicious. He's not stealing anything from her other than her time, her energy, like all of that stuff that could be directed to somebody who would actually appreciate her. Yeah. And he so was it's not illegal, but it is ethically fucked. Ethically fucked there and also the whole being a cop just to get access to adoption records, his entire career choice was built on the back of rigging the system so that he could abuse his privileges to pull records that he shouldn't have access to. Yeah. Well, and there was a... I got that kind of vibe a lot when he just kind of kept, like, dunking on the system, and he's like, yeah, bureaucracy shit is fucked, and it's really <laughs> easy to... Texas. Yeah, fucking Texas, man. It's like, oh, Not okay. one of them bothered to check if I had an aid. Yeah, because no, every single the step of the process, he was introduced as a late stage AIDS patient. Nobody thought they would. Yeah, have no, for but it. you know, he quoted. He's like, and not one, not yeah. one person bothered to give me an a- actual AIDS test. Fucking Texas. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that would have happened just about anywhere, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the fact that he came in and his paperwork, like his, he, he. I mean, granted, it was forged, but he had paperwork that said he tested HIV positive. So, like, it, it, I understand where nobody would feel the need to do that, but especially when every, every one of those tests, like everything that they do, 
is something they have to charge you for. That costs the hospital money. That's why, like, even if all they're doing is putting a fucking bandage on you, they fucking scan that shit into the computer because you're paying for it. At least in this country. I don't know how it works in developed nations, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how this goes in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. I think we just kind of look at the amount of boxes of shit the hospital gets and sort of, you know, eyeball it. Yeah. There you go. Because we're developed and advanced. It's mostly like potatoes and whiskey anyway. So. I was going to say, there's no re- actual I mean, you say that, boxes. but when my nanny gave birth to, like, my aunts and uncles <laughs> and shit, back in her day, when a woman gave birth, in order to get her iron back up, they would unironically give her Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> That's an actual <laughs> thing. God How much of Ireland does Guinness world. own? <laughs> uh, at least, in, like, a chunk of the capital. Goodness, this I feel like this is the Truman Show all over again. This is the first time a corporation has adopted has a country. country. Uh-huh. I think we both know it's not. Oh no, no, yeah. sure. I'm sad now. I was gonna say, yeah. um, oh no, reality is slipping back in. Quick, make a funny. He spit cum over the boat. <laughs> ah, didn't love him. Didn't love him. <laughs> See, the I title of the movie was a lie. lie. Uh, I was gonna say, do we do we have anything uh, else we want to say about the movie? I mean, overall impression and score, I guess, is a good way to round out. I don't even know where yeah, I'd I, score I think this. it was a good movie. I just I didn't like. I don't know. I was entertained good. by the comedy bits, but all of the drama. Yeah, really... good movie, yeah. but I was, but until the comedy kicked in, I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> well, I was about to say, like the the job for uh, you and uh, Jim, like they both like. I'm not gonna lie, they got some tears out of me. It's like they did pretty fucking good for what they had. And then they got me to fucking laugh. Like, then, yeah, you fucker. Like, yeah. You fuck. Like, yeah, like I said, that one scene where, like, he's like, like nothing is said, so he starts crying and shit like that. The that, second. That, the second then, yeah, the like, music starts goes, playing and then goes, <laughs> you know, making your death be an ace. Yeah. That was definitely <laughs> something. Yeah. There you go. So, I mean, uh, I, I, I definitely I wouldn't like say a, it's my favorite uh, Jim Carrey movie. Like, I wouldn't This put is also it in... the latest in our list, right? 2008? Uh, this was, I think this was one of his last uh, movies before he took that break. Yeah. Wow. That, like, 10-year break. You could yeah. have fooled me. I did not know when this movie came out. It's a 2009 film. Yeah, it's a 2009 film. Yeah, but I think everything else on the on the list that we have came It's like his very now. early oh, work, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Most out, or most yeah. So. Yeah, because even some of the other ones are as early as what, like... Late 94. Late sure 1980s, early 1990s. Most of them were pre two thousand, so like yeah. Yeah, I think mid nineties, early two thousands. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. We did it. It was. Yeah, I'm glad we put it in the order we did. Like I feel like this just does kind of you know not count as a full on comedy the way some of the other ones do. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask. Uh, wrong with or, that, like, yeah. Hold on. So, sorry, Max. Go no, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask Slur. Uh, why he chose this movie. Because I thought it would be interesting. interesting. I hadn't seen it in a very long time. I saw it once when I was like, probably around the time it came out, to be honest. And I just remember thinking it was, oh, wow, that's like, pretty good. And then I never really thought about it again. I want to see how it hold up. And oh, that I think explains I a lot the same of the slurs pick. Yeah, slurs yeah, 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 of course I would have the weirdest one, but you know, so it goes. Uh, maybe. Listen, it's your choice. You can pick this movie or you can suck dick. Okay. <laughs> the choice is yours. It's totally yours. <clears throat> That'd be great. Yeah, I mean, by second and I do think it held up pretty well. Because the the worst things we've said about this movie are portions where it all still works perfectly fine. It's yeah. just you know it's not really coming and grabbing us. Like if that's the worst the movie's doing, then goddamn. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't score this movie lower. And I think I, could, I don't think yeah, it was, was a going... bad movie. It just. <clears throat> Subjectively, it didn't really reel me in all that much. I mean, I don't, I don't like it because there's too many faggots in it. Yeah, it's there's really a lot either. of faggot stuff going on here. Hey, Cleveland wouldn't hear a word of this shit. Okay. Adam Sandler role. If I paid him ten dollars, he would, because he's a man of his word. <laughs> well, I mean, that doesn't count. 
watch. Yeah. Realistically, I That's like the movie, I to get to the but it's mostly background noise at this point because I've seen it so much, and it, it gives me a lot of like the late Adam Sandler comedy stylings where the slapstick <clears throat> is moving into more of that politically correct joke drop, and you are playing off of the base stereotype that everybody sees. Nowadays, everybody fucking lives in New York or California. So you have to be super extravagant in the way you see things. It's just, it's decent for background noise. It's it's decent for Cleavon. I'll give it that. Cleavon <laughs> was, was my bad. favorite part of the movie, hands down. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to make an edit of uh, I Love You, Philip Morris, but it's just Cleavon. <laughs> if you could somehow shop Cleavon's head over on every character, no, 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 no. There's a poster of this movie where it shows Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor like making a heart, but they're like both like reaching behind their like back or whatever. Slur, you know what to do. <laughs> if you could somehow Photoshop uh, Cleavon's head over uh, Philip Morris, and uh, that's the and like I love can you, we, Cleavon. Can we make that yeah. the thumbnail? <laughs> yeah. Make that the fucking title too. I love you, Cleavon. I love you, Cleavon. <laughs> we just all follow the actor on Twitter. We just keep his going. word is his bond. We oh, just keep <laughs> we just keep going. Like so, what? So is your word really your motherfucking bond? So speaking of like that cancerous bird app, um, mm-hmm. have you reached out to to Jim Bob the Lifter to join us? Or no, we we because he's he's sold. He's interested in coming on our prestigious yeah, podcast. Or I mean, you could have reached out to Obi Wan. You could have reached out to Cleavon. I don't think, I might have been able to reach Cleavon actually. Weirdly enough, I don't think he's been in a lot of stuff. Well, we've got Cleavon right here. No, no. Yeah, we got Cleavon. <laughs> we got Cleavon at home. We got Cleavon. <laughs> I'd give this like a six or something, maybe a seven. Honestly, I'd give it like an eight, like because it's like yeah. I would say a seven or eight is fair because like technically, you know, and objectively, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's really good. At the same time, is there anything that like really wows? Like, as I thought, but like, why are you giving it a six? Because like, what? Yeah, what's dropping it down to a six for you? Well, more. It was more my question of like when a film is just going through the numbers and like going through like its story that's what normally puts it at a five correct and normally uh, whatever like wows or does really well that's what pushes it up correct that's normally how we how we do this okay so so using like, the same argument like, right so you go into the movie and your call it the wyattometer is at a five <laughs> Right from the from the get go, and every time something good happens, maybe it, it creeps up to a six or a seven, and if anything bad happens, it starts to drop back down. Mm-hmm. So, what were the bad things that kept it going down? What were the good things that went that drove it up for you? Specifically? So, so the comedy was when it actually decided to be funny. Uh, that's what put it at a that's what put it at a six and that's where it just kind of stayed there because the uh uh i'm trying to re uh read the chat for a second no uh the it i guess yeah it did the dramatic moments rather well so i guess it could be put up at a seven i can't yeah i can't really think of any flaws i can't really think of the, of that many things that wowed me that's why it, it uh well, okay, but but average. some of that, what you're referring to of like the wow factor, that's that's subjective stuff. That's fair. And like, also, it was more of a question rather than my personal barometer, because my personal barometer uh, in this case, is like, like uh, subjectively, no, yeah, this is, is a like a probably a five. Uh, but on the objective is it meter, you don't like big people. I've always hated my kind, don't you know that? Yeah. That's why you fuck them so hard. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> no, Listen, would... you've got choices in life. You can either suck dick <laughs> or, or suck, or or suck, suck dick. dick. <laughs> where would that would be great. Like, so where would, you, where would you guys put it? Like you said, a, a six, a seven or an eight? Yeah, seven or eight objectively. Subjectively, it's a five. I don't really 
care too much yeah. about Spider-Man. I guess I'm, more, invested I guess in I'm it. more wondering like what pushes it up there for you guys. The cinematography, the acting, it, the, the yeah, the, the technical aspects of the film and the acting, like all of those things that can be met, like it does all of those things well. There's nothing wrong with the film. Mm-hmm. The story isn't very inconsistent. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, there's no massive plot holes or inconsistencies or any of that kind of stuff. Like it's all there. Like even it's if we just... like, if we sat here and dissected it, it'd probably be higher. I'm just giving it a seven and eight. I'm just giving it eight. Yeah, there's a couple bits here and there. Like some of his cons, in order to like enhance the visual flair of how yeah. good he is at them, some oh, of them go a little bit too well. And I guess you could say like the fucking <laughs> whole thing with a lawyer, like. Uh, no, I, hold on. I got it. The one issue he took a fucking swan dive off a of... <laughs> and didn't. Fu- so I was thinking that for a split second. I was like, he fucking face planted in the concrete, and he's, and he's, he's fine. He's, he's fucking dead. dead. <laughs> Fun fact: you can like a fall to kill you is only from your height. Like that could kill you. Yeah, that fucker jumped off the top of a fucking second story. But no, I'm assuming it's a second story parking garage. It's probably bigger. But, yeah, and he uh, landed he like face first. Like, he's fucking dead. Yeah, it's not an instance of where he landed on his feet and, like, broke his fucking leg. No, he fucking swan-dived and probably would have landed either on his head or on like, his back. I was, like, <laughs> super worried he was gonna, like, break his arm on the fucking side of the dumpster or something horrible like that. And, like, and it was just, like, face down. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. No, or I thought, like, him landing and then it turns out it was a bunch of used needles. Like, oh, that's how he got AIDS. <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have used to cover our rocks. Why were you assuming so early he would have AIDS? Alright, yeah, what the hell? Because gonna... he's gay! Mm. God damn. It's the subtle undertone. Haven't you seen Milk? Or whatever that fucking movie is called. What? Ew. No, I don't watch that fag shit. <laughs> what the fuck? We're not gay, dog. Milk doesn't give you AIDS, I dude. Don't. What the fuck? Have you seen milk? Yeah, milk does a body <laughs> not, Have you seen not the, the not the not the, the, not the actual sub you not the milk? actual like, substance the you idiot? You no, the fucking movie <laughs> called milk. No, they a bit. know what you're talking. About. <laughs> I like... no, watch gay media, dog. I'm sorry, I'm just not into. I mean, maybe if you drink skim milk, it'll give you AIDS. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> That acidophilus milk. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, does anyone have anything else left to say? No, no I'm pretty sure my word is my bond. <laughs> yeah, so we're all about like at seven or eight for most of us. Yeah. Objectively, we rate a little bit lower. I really enjoy uh, Steve Russell as a character. He's just very fun to watch. He's very entertaining. So I. I just didn't love the movie for that, so I rank it maybe subjectively a bit higher than you guys. Well, it's because no, that's fair. That's that's what subjectivity is for. Yeah. yeah. And with that, uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll see you all next week. <laughs> Jog on. Didn't even ask what the women think. Okay. Wow. Bruh. Sexism.